Hey guys and girls, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about parallel scripting. The first thing that we need to learn is how to use Roblox's micro profiler. I've created a base plate project, and here we can see that we must press Control Alt F6 to open the micro profiler. I am now going to press Control Alt F6, and now I can see every frame along the top of the screen. And on the article, it says the orange bars indicate the processing time. And if we further scroll down, we can see that it says if we press Control P, we can pause the recording of the frames. So what I'm going to do is click the plugins tab, then click on the sky and then press Control P. Now let's break down this screen. The first thing we'll notice is that there are white text along this left and each one of these is a thread. We can see that there is a thread called GPU and we can see that there are some worker threads and we can also see that there is a main thread and there are some other threads down here. If we look back at the article and scroll down to threads, we should be able to see what the job of each thread type is. So we can see the job of the GPU thread and the worker threads and the main thread. Now, in order to move around in this view, we can click and drag up and down or left and right. We can also click on a frame at the top for instance, if I want to view this frame over here, I can click here and it will take me to this frame. I can scroll in and out with my mouse wheel and we can see that this green grows as I zoom in and out so I can see which frames I can currently see. I can move my mouse over the frame to highlight it and these gray bars going from top to bottom indicate when a frame starts and stops. You may have noticed that when I pressed the plugins tab, I got this frame that took a long time to process. If I click on this frame, it will take me to that frame and we can see this frame here. And we should also notice that the distance between the bars is wider on this frame compared to our normal frames. And if we swipe the view up down to the main thread, we should see that there are these bars on the main thread that are related to the plugins tab. So if I try to find some labels that, here we go, there's one called manage plugins action. And we have one called built in rig builder. So we can see that Roblox did a lot of processing to process this plugins tab. And that's why this frame took a long time to finish. Let's now make a script and see if we can see it in the micro profiler. So the first thing I'm going to do is press Control P to unpause the recording. And inside of replicated first, I'm going to create a new local script and delete this first line here. And the first thing I'm going to do is get the run service. And I'm now going to connect a function to the render step. And I'm going to create a for loop that does a load of rubbish just to waste the CPU. And if I play the game now, and if I press the Control P key, I can pause the frame recording. And if I swipe down to the main thread, and zoom in, we should see that we have something here called local script, which is the name of this script here. And we can see how long it took. 
It's also possible to add labels to the micro profiler. So I can come to the top here and say debug.profilebegin and give it a label of rubbish work one. And I also need to say when this label needs to end. So to do this, I can say debug.profile end. And what I'm going to do is copy and paste this like so. And I'm going to call this one rubbish work two. So I've now run the game again and I'm going to press control P after recording some frames and I'm going to select a random frame and I'm going to scroll down to the main thread and we can see we have the local script and we can see the labels that we added to the scripts and we can see rubbish work one ran first and rubbish work two ran second. What I'm going to do now is duplicate this local script. So I've made a duplicate and I'm going to name this one local script one and this one local script two. And I've run the game again, recorded some frames and pressed control P to pause the recording. And I'm going to scroll back down to the main thread. And now we can see that we have local script two and then local script one. And inside of each script, we have rubbish work one rubbish work two, rubbish work one, rubbish work two. And we can see that they don't run at the same time, but they run one after the other. So local script two ran first, and once it finished, then local script one ran instantly after local script two. Now, if we want to hide all these other bars and only show the scripts, and the labels, what we can do is come into groups and select Lua and script and deselect all. And now everything should hide, but only scripts and the labels should remain. Now, what I'm going to do is delete local script two and rename local script one back to local script and I'm going to delete the second work. And I'm now going to connect another function to the stepped event, like so. And I'm also going to connect another function to the heartbeat event. And finally, I'm going to make a while true do loop with a task dot wait inside. And now I'm going to copy and paste this rubbish work into every one of these things. And I'm going to rename the labels. So I'm going to call this render step work. And I'm going to call this step work. And call this one heartbeat work. And call this one while work. If we look at the run service class and read the descriptions for these events, we can see that the render step event fires every frame prior to the frame being rendered. And the step event fires every frame prior to the physics simulation. And the heartbeat event fires every frame after the physics simulation. So if we look inside of our micro profiler, we can see that render stepped was first, then stepped, then while, then heartbeat. And we can see that render stepped was done on the main thread while stepped, while and heartbeat were done on a worker thread. And if we move to the next frame and I zoom out slightly, we can see that the worker thread is different every frame, but the render step is always on the main thread. So here we can see it was on this work thread and it moved to this worker thread and this work thread and this work thread like so. And if you want to see when the frame was rendered, what you can do is move your mouse onto the frame at the top and you should see that there are three colors, green, yellow, 
and red. The green represents before the frame was rendered and the yellow represents after the frame was rendered and the red is the next frame before it was rendered. Now what I'm going to do is duplicate this local script and I'm going to call one of them local script 1 and one of them local script 2. And if we look at the micro profiler once again, we may now notice that Roblox is sometimes skipping the render work. So for this frame here, we can see there's no render work. And if we keep scrolling, we can see that this frame here also has no render work. So because this work is too much, Roblox is sometimes skipping the render work in order to keep up. And if we zoom in, we can see that script two did its render work. Then once that finished, script one did the render work. Then script two did the step work. Script one did the step work. And script one did the while work. Script two did the while work. Script two did the heartbeat work and script one did the heartbeat work. So they're all done one after the other and not at the same time. Now, in order to start using parallel scripting, what we need to know about are actors and the connect parallel function. If I go into script two and change these connections to connect parallel and I do this for all of these connections and I'm going to delete the while true loop for now and the same for script one so we have three events that are connected on script one and three events that are connected parallel on script two and if I run the game we can see that we get an error saying that there is no actor. And we can also see in the micro profiler that local script two is no longer running and only local script one is running. So I'm going to create a actor and I'm going to put local script two inside of the actor. And if we look at the micro profiler once again, we can see that script two has come back, but is not where it used to be, it's slightly different. So before the render step would be down here on the main thread, but now the render step has moved to here on the worker thread. And the order has changed. So before render step would come first, then it would be stepped, and then it would be heartbeat. Where now for this local script two, it's step is first, heartbeat is second, and step, render step is third. And you may also notice that even though we're uh, connecting in parallel, they still run in series and not at the same time. So now what I'm going to do is the same way I connected these functions in parallel, I'm going to do the same in local script one. So I'm going to change these to connect parallel and I'm going to move this into the actor. And we should now see that the render step in the main thread has gone completely. And now both local script one and two, both do the stepped work, then do the heartbeat, then do the render step, but not at the same time, still one after the other. So instead of putting both of the scripts inside of the same actor, let's put the, the second script in a different actor, like so. And now we should see that both script one and script two are working on different worker threads and they no longer run one after the other, but both at the same time. I'm now going to make some changes to the two scripts. The first change I'm going to make is delete these two events 
and only keep the heartbeat event. I'm then going to change the label to be desynchronized work, like so. And now I'm going to type task.synchronize and then I'm going to do the same work again, but I'm going to change the label to be synchronized. And now I'm going to copy all of this code into local script two and replace the old code. So we have the two exact same scripts on local script one and local script two. And now if we look at the micro profiler once again, we can see that the desynchronized work run at the same time. And once they have both completed, it runs the synchronized work. And that's when we're using a single thread and they run one after the other. We can also see that the order is different. So here we can see local script one ran first. Here we can see one ran first again. Here we can see script two ran first and one ran second. And we can also see that it waits for both of these scripts to finish before it starts this script. So here there's a little gap where it didn't start because script one was still computing. What I'm going to do now is do task.desynchronize and then I'm going to copy and paste the top part and paste it down here again and I'm going to call this desynchronized work and put a one at the front and I'm going to put a one at the front of this and a number two at the front for this one and number two for this one. So we first start desynchronized and we're going to call this code. We're going to synchronize and then call this code. Then we're going to desynchronize again and call this code and then synchronize once again and then call this code. And I'm going to copy and paste this into local script two as well. If we now look at the micro profiler once again, we can see that the desynchronized work runs first and the synchronized work runs second. And we can also see that number two, this code over here, ran first for both script two and script one, and one desynchronized worked second for script one and script two. And then synchronized two ran first for both local script two and local script one. And then finally, synchronized one ran for script two and local script one. If we look at the synchronized part of the micro profiler, we can notice that the order of the scripts are random. So we can see that we started with script two and on this frame, we started with script one. But if we look at the labels, we'll notice that the code goes in reverse so we start with synchronized two and we stop with synchronized one. And this is true for every frame. But I don't think it would be safe to rely on this because Roblox may change the order in a future update. So until Roblox makes a statement saying that this order will always be this way, I would not rely on this fact. Thank you for watching my video and if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment down below.